Good day, everyone, and welcome back in. A look back now at sports coverage from the past 75 years. <laughs> Two of the best have covered sports in the state her, her of Alabama. Are still here. You, you no, I'm talking here, exactly. about you two. I know y'all transitioned into news, but and you still do sports uh, somewhat, right? Mm -hmm. With right. the high school show. Yeah, the high yeah. school show. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about that and, um, you know, what what times you guys experience. Well, you know, we, we try to have fun in sports too, but right. uh, we, earlier you were showing the 70s promo for Good Day Alabama. We had some fun promos in sports. Some of the us. best. Yeah. Yeah, the one that always stands out to me, uh, you know, and I think we're going to show it is the caveman deal, but but uh, these are just crazy things that we used to come look up with. Look at y'all, look how Look at the serious yeah. look there. <laughs> I don't know, we were, that was the year we were riding in a stock car, I think. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sideline, obviously, and that was obviously started by Rick, a former colleague. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, that highlight show really made a difference in a lot of kids, a lot of, a lot of parents' lives. It's really turned uh, high school football into what it is today in the state of Alabama. We, truth got to be told on that because now uh, the, everybody in every market has a high school football show. We were the first in the state and uh, still carrying on going into our 36th year. What's the name of that show again? Show Sideline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, it was always a lot of fun. And, you know, we, yeah. Earlier we were talking about the chaos sometimes of, of here on Good Day Alabama. We have so many guests going around. Uh, it was the same with Sideline. I mean, there was stuff coming at the last minute, and you tried to do your best as a professional so that the show went off without a hitch, without everybody knowing there's people running <laughs> in with these shot sheets at the last minute. You're trying to make out names scribbled like that. The so, best yeah. thing that ever happened to the show was when they moved games kickoffs to 7 o'clock. <laughs> Yeah. Not 7.30. I mean, well, you mean to 2.7. Yeah, yeah the they, earlier time. Yeah, the they early were earlier Because they were able to make deadline. Yeah. yeah, so that was that was another thing. So that's the fun that continues, and, and you see the group there. Oh. Um, but let's talk about some of the more memorable. There's the caveman. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have okay. That know. I had forgotten about that. I have one. no recollection yeah. of the senator. Um, I have no Look idea at y'all. You're just babies. Here. But uh, we had we you know we you know Rick was here of course as former sports director before him. Sorry, you I had, got lost. You had Eli Gold uh, obviously was here, and of course we had Herb Winches earlier. Um, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of great sports guys uh, did local sports here at this very station. Yeah, without a doubt. And we were just glad to carry the torch with him through for a couple of weeks at least. You know, but uh, when it looks at football or sports in this state you can't you can't mention anything without mentioning two names and that of course being uh, Bear Bryant and Nick Saban uh, we were fortunate to cover coach Saban for his entire tenure and but I don't know that everybody that. today yeah. knows this I think some of the older generation remembers but the coach Bryant show was recorded right here in this station where Destiny McKeever sitting over there in the traffic center right mm -hmm. now uh, so um, those are some good times and of course that's his burial there at uh, Elmwood and you know just the live coverage we were talking about that earlier of his he was bigger than life. Procession, yeah. people along the roadways on the overpasses mm -hmm. it, it was it was a big moment the one thing that people may not know about coach Brian is that when he came into these studios he knew every individual's name who was associated with that show and he would talk to them that's a story that I, I always heard from a bunch of guys and of course uh, when coach Saban came in that was a huge story. When, when we're talking about huge stories here, you know, the other one you have to think about is, you know, arguably, I'm not going to argue this, I think he was the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan taking a break from basketball to play baseball for the Birmingham Barons. Mm -hmm. Those were crazy times. That was a called. time. It was fantastic stuff. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, he wasn't the easiest person to work with. But then again, he was also here to play some baseball. And of course, he was still a star in his own right. But I just remember when the rumors were coming out that he was going back into b basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go, hey, you got to go and, and, and get something from Michael. So I and uh, Mike Tucker, we hop in the car and we drive all the way up to Chattanooga because they were playing the lookouts at that time and drive, uh, you know, those, those times. And I go, Michael's walking across the field and I'm running there. Hey, Michael. <laughs> Are, you, are the rumors true? And he wouldn't say a word. So I went all that way just <laughs> just just to, just, to, just to run out of breath. Uh, and uh, uh, performance. Speaking, okay. speaking of dual sports stars, uh, none better than Bo Jackson. He's the greatest athlete I've ever seen. Janice, of course, went to high school with him. I want to know why it took so long for him to get inducted into the Kansas City Royals Hall of Fame, though. I don't get it. You know, he uh, the the one highlight that I remember is, with the Royals uniform is when he caught a ball and then he runs along the wall for about mm -hmm. five or six steps, hit a home run in an All Star game. Just a guy that could do everything, and I, I wouldn't imagine what it was like to see him in high school. You know, he was he he loved track so much in high school. You know, but we loved him in football. But he 
really became the star when he got to Auburn, right, you know? Right. And that was fun to watch him grow and to then become an NFL player. And, um, and he still wants to give back to Alabama, so I love him. He's going to join us later in the week, matter of fact. A couple of pivotal moments to, to mention over the 75 years here for Auburn, and football in particular, is, of course, the year they broke the streak, bow over the top against Alabama right here at Legion Field. And 1989, the first time the Iron Bowl ever played at, 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 at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I was in the middle of all that. It was crazy, wasn't it? Yes. So that was a big moment. But when you also look at it, the, the college football national championship from 2009 through like 2016 or 2017 was a team who went through Alabama to, yeah. to win that. That was an incredible run. And NASCAR was so huge back then. It still mm -hmm. is, but not to the level it was yeah. when we had the Alabama gang in Hueytown. Janus, I know you were working when when uh, I was wor you know, working in a different market at the time when Davey Allison uh, passed. Yeah, we got the call that the uh, helicopter had crashed and it was... Um, just a very, very sad time. What a, what a, what a career he was already had, but was going to still have, you know, because he died so young. Yeah, a rising star, and um, we certainly uh, always thinking about the Allisons and love uh, the Alabama game. All right, still two of the best. 75 years. Sheldon's been here for all of them. We appreciate um, your work. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, Will I be here for another 75 or what? <laughs>